Today's lesson is finger tapping for beginners. Now, when I say beginners, I just want to clarify this real quick. That doesn't necessarily mean you're a brand new guitar player. Now, you may be, but you also may be someone who has been playing for 10, 20, 30 years or whatever, but you've never tapped into this technique, and that was a very bad pun. So, I'm going to show you the fundamentals of finger tapping. So, whether you're new at playing lead guitar or maybe you've been playing for a while and you just have never dove into this, maybe you've never even dove into lead guitar playing, uh, these fundamentals and the exercises that we're going to go through, uh, I really hope that they catch you up to speed and just kind of help you progress beyond some of those challenges and pain points that come along with trying to learn finger tapping. Now, real quick, for my Patreon supporters, I do have the tabs that you can download. Uh, that's available to you right now. And I've got a cool backing track that you can play along with as well. And I explain how to integrate the finger tapping into that backing track on the Patreon post. Now this finger tapping lesson is broken down into four parts. We're gonna dive right into those right now, but make sure you hang around till the end of the lessons. I've got some cool stuff I wanna share with you. So the first thing we need to understand is the fundamentals of finger tapping. What does finger tapping consist of? And it really boils down to what's called hammer-ons and pull-offs. So I'm gonna demonstrate that briefly for you here before we move on to finger tapping because this is really the culprit of finger tapping. This is kind of the foundation of that and we're essentially going to be doing hammer-ons and pull-offs when we start finger tapping on the fretboard here so check this out this is a hammer-on and a pull-off they're essentially kind of used you know simultaneously here so listen to this simple hammer-on and pull-off here <laughs> Okay, real simple, we're on the G string and we're playing that on the fifth and seventh frets. Now, what we're doing is I'm picking that fifth fret. After that, I'm going to hammer down. I'm using my third finger to hammer down on that seventh fret, meaning I'm not picking that seventh fret. Check this out. that's a hammer-on. Now, most of the time when you do a hammer-on, you're gonna follow that with a pull-off, and that's why I said these are often played simultaneously. So you're going to hammer on and then pull off, which means you're not going to pick that string, or that note rather, okay? You're going to hammer down on that seventh fret, but pull off to get that sound back on the fifth fret there, if that makes sense, okay? Listen. And to get that sound, to get that note back on that fifth fret there, you're essentially pulling your finger off of the seventh fret, hence pull off. So let's go through this one more time. Now, if you wanted to continue practicing this method here before going to finger tapping, what I would suggest doing is just do this here. And you can go as fast as you want, but that's really not the goal here. Uh, but it's just to get used to that technique, okay? Because again, when we go to finger tapping, which we're going to get into in the next part here, that's essentially what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now let's apply what we've learned to the actual finger tapping method, which is what you're learning in this video here. This is a very simple pattern. I'm going to play it real quick for you, and then we'll break it down, okay? So here's what we're doing, and you'll notice we're using the same string and same frets. I like to keep things simple uh, when you're just starting out here, okay? We're using those same frets that we used, that we played in the last little part one lesson here, okay? In the hammer on pull off lesson, and that's the G string, fifth fret, and seventh fret, okay? We're adding with the tapping finger the 12th fret. Now, real quick, I prefer to tap with my first finger. Some people like to tap with their middle finger. It doesn't matter. What I like to suggest to people is play whatever's most natural and comfortable to you. That's always going to be the best method, okay? There's no wrong or right here. It's going to be what's most comfortable to you, okay? So just let that kind of come out. Practice with both. 
and you know just use whatever finger feels most natural okay we're actually starting out the pattern with the finger tap which is on that 12th fret from there you're going to hear the note on the seventh fret okay uh, but you'll notice when i'm tapping as i'm playing this pattern i don't already have my finger placed on the seventh fret I actually have my first finger placed on that lowest note possible that we're playing in this pattern, which is the fifth fret. And here's why. As we start moving into this a little faster, and I'm not suggesting that you try to play this at super fast speed. Tapping's not really about speed as much as it is about getting that just cool sound, that really cool effect. I mean, this can really just spice up your guitar solos, which is why we're going through this, okay? I want you to learn this and, and nail this. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing a very quick hammer on after I after I hammer down, which is essentially a hammer on that you're doing with that tapping finger on that 12th fret. I've got my finger on the fifth fret with my my fretting hand here, fifth fret, and I'm going to do a real quick hammer on the seventh fret right after I hammer down on the 12th fret. So I know that was kind of a mouthful there, but as I try to play this slower, it's going to sound like we're just doing you know 12 seven five. But I don't necessarily want you to practice that way. I mean, if you need to do that just to get used to the notes, fine. But I want you to try to practice a little bit faster than that because as you build that speed up, that's when you're going to notice I'm not doing this. Listen to the difference as I speed this up. Listen to that slight little hammer on between the fifth and the seventh fret as I do this. Okay, so you notice the difference, and it's really hard for me to play that, that super slow, because when I play it super slow, we end up doing this. Again, it's okay to get the pattern down to get your hands used to playing those frets or tapping hammer on pull off, right? But again, as you build up speed, it's going to sound more like this. So what I want you to remember is start the pattern with that fretboard hand, that first finger on the fifth fret, okay? And then hammer down with your whatever finger you're tapping with, and in my case it's my first finger, on the twelfth fret, but then immediately hammer down on that seventh fret, okay? There's almost not even any time between that, but it's that little subtle, uh, that subtle hammer on that you're just throwing in between. All right, so I'm sure you're doing good so far, but we're gonna bump things up just a little bit. I like to take you uh, in just a natural and gradual progression from one step to another. So I, I hope this lesson is helping so far. Uh, if it is, please leave me a comment, let me know. Or if you have questions, of course, you guys can always leave those in the comments as well. But I want to add a note to that pattern. We're gonna keep the pattern simple. I like simplicity, especially when you're just starting out because the concept is really what we're grasping here. You're not really, playing the notes, even though you are, even though I'm sharing some notes with you here, you're not really playing the notes, you're grasping the concept of finger tapping, which you can apply that to any place on the fretboard. So we just really simplified everything right there, okay? So we're gonna add a note. We're going to keep things the same, G string, we're tapping that 12th fret, and we're also doing a hammer on pull off from seven to, or from five to seven, okay? So five, seven and 12 we're gonna add the 11th fret to this and that's also going to be tapped as well with that whatever finger you're using for tapping here so this is what it sounds like <laughs> Okay, that's pretty simple. Again, 
exact same pattern. I play that four times, but then you're going to tap on the 11th fret four times instead of the 12th fret. So a very subtle move, a very subtle transition there. But I want you to start out simple because those types of transitions where you're just starting to finger tap, that can be difficult. A lot of guitar players can get hung up on that. You know, we find that one sweet spot where we can tap really well and get all those hammer-ons and pull-offs and it sounds really, really cool. Uh, but then when we throw another note in, sometimes that can throw us off. So we're starting out kind of subtle by just shifting up one. So here's what we're doing. Let me just go through this kind of slow for you. Again, it's the same exact pattern we just went through, right? We play it four times and then we just make that one slight transition, just that one slight shift. Now, if you're having trouble going from that 12th fret to the 11th, because you know, when you're learning a technique, sometimes we'll freeze up a little bit, and, you know, we, we've all been there. And some guitar players just catch on to certain techniques faster than others. So if you're not catching on as fast, keep practicing. Please don't give up on this. Keep practicing. Keep pushing yourself. Uh, you'll wake up one day and it will just be there. I'll give you a quick analogy before we move on to the next. Um, I was learning to ride my bike backwards, sitting on the handlebars and ride backwards. This is my back in my freestyling days or my, my lousy attempt to freestyle. But hey, it was fun. I had this cool GT Pro Performer bike. This is back in the 80s, right? And uh, I just couldn't get it. My friends, they were getting it. And, uh, and I'm like, well, what's happening? I kept falling down, but I just, every single day, I kept practicing. And one day I sat up on those handlebars and like magic, I just started doing it, okay? It just happened. Now I'm not saying this is magical, but what I'm saying is consistency will always win the game and patience. Consistency and patience, those two, you'll always win, okay? Now real quick, if you are having trouble with that transition, what I would advise is just Hanging on the one for a little bit, okay? Stop, and then go to the next. Stop, go back to the 12th fret. Stop, go to the 11th fret. Get those down, and what this does, guys, what, what this is doing is it's is kind of lodging in your head, in your brain. I know it sounds kind of like weird. We're lodging something in our head, but it builds that connection, you know, for lack of better terms, it, between your your brain and what your hands, what you want your hands to do or your fingers to do, rather. So, as you build that connection, it'll be much easier to do this. All right, our final lesson here, we're going to do something a little different, okay? This time, we're going to add in an open string. Now, this makes things, uh, I don't want to say more difficult, but it can kind of be a rough start, if that makes sense. And I'll share what I'm talking about here. But this is the pattern that we're going to be playing. <laughs> Okay, so we're still on the G string, keeping things simple. There are only three notes here. I kind of like to break things down and just simplify that. It's only three notes, okay? So when you start thinking about that, it's like, okay, this isn't going to be that bad. I've got it. Three notes. All right, so we are tapping, our, our finger tap fret, we'll call it that, <laughs> is going to be the ninth fret here, okay? That's where we're tapping. That's where we're starting at. Now, we've got an open string then we've got another fret that we're going to be playing, and that's going to be the fifth fret. Okay, we've already played the fifth fret once, but the other the other two are new notes for us. So we actually start out just like we did with the twelfth fret, the tapping pattern we did on the twelfth fret. We start by finger tapping that ninth fret. Okay. Now what you'll notice is that before we had a little leverage, and what I mean by that, you already had uh, your finger on the fifth fret. That gave us a little bit of leverage, so to speak, because when you have the open string, well, you're prone to a little bit more noise, string noise, and a little bit rougher of a start, if that makes sense, okay? So uh, this is one of those 
patterns that you definitely want to practice over and over and over. Uh, sometimes it'll be messy, sometimes it won't, but you will eventually nail it, I promise. Now, like the other pattern, right, everything's pretty much the same. We're gonna be going from that open string almost immediately hammering down on the fifth fret. Okay, again, we don't have that leverage. So before we're going five to seven, that was a little bit easier, you'll, as you'll find, than going from an open string to the fifth fret, okay? So here's our pattern. We Again, we start out by finger tapping that ninth fret as we pull off, because remember, all tapping is is a hammer on and pull off. As we pull off, you're gonna be pulling off to the open string. But quickly hammering down on that fifth fret. Now, real quick, do what we did before. Remember how we added another note? I'm not gonna do a whole different lesson for this. We're just gonna do it right here. Uh, try adding in that fourth fret as well. So maybe play the patterns four times like we just played it and then play four times as you're gonna hear me play here. So let's put all this together. Now again, if it's best for you to practice just the one pattern, stop, then practice the other pattern, do that. Or one thing I should have mentioned earlier, uh, maybe you want to play each pattern eight times instead of four times. Maybe you want to do this instead. <laughs> Now, a few final tips I have for you that's really going to help you get better at finger tapping and playing lead guitar in general. Uh, but before we get into that, if you do not have my free practice guide called Metal Riffs and Licks, which has a series of metal rhythms to practice as well as some lead patterns, make sure you download your copy of that. There's a link in the description of this video grab that. Now, if you already have my free guide, I've got links to my guitar courses in the description of this video as well. I always like for folks to get my free stuff first to find out, hey, are we a good fit? Uh, and then you kind of learn my teaching style a little bit better and decide whether you want to get into my paid courses or not. Uh, maybe you just want the free stuff, that's fine, but I do have some courses that are extremely structured that can really help you get to that next level as well. So again, check those out. Links are in the description. A couple things I want you to remember as you move forward with not just finger tapping, but lead guitar in general, playing guitar solos. So number one, finger tapping, along with many other methods and techniques, it is not all about speed. Look, playing fast is great. I mean, it's cool. It takes a lot of skill to do that and play that smoothly, you know, the faster you get. But again, lead guitar, playing guitar solos, it's not all about speed. So I want you to know that going into this and going into learning any type of lead guitar method. The reason this is so important is because some licks just don't call for speed, okay? And just because you play fast doesn't necessarily mean it sounds good it also doesn't mean it's going to resonate with the listener. Now, I'm not knocking fast guitar solos, okay? I, I shred, and you guys who have been following me for a while, thank you, by the way, I appreciate you. Uh, you guys hear me shred all the time, but I feel like it's important to notate this because we're kind of in a world now where everyone's shredding. As you scroll through, it's like, okay, they're just blazing across the fretboard. But do you remember any of those guitar solos that you hear when folks are just, you know, blasting through the frets there? Probably not. Some of the most memorable guitar solos, and this is really what you're going after because you want to captivate people. That's what music is about, right? You don't want to just impress other guitar players, which that's going to be a very, very small percentage of your audience because so many people love rock and metal music. They love guitar solos, but they're not necessarily guitar players or musicians. They just want to hear a cool, memorable solo. So don't limit yourself, but more importantly, I don't want you guys to get frustrated when you're trying to play faster and it just doesn't seem to be coming. I don't want you to give up on that. I want you to keep pushing yourself because again, I'm not knocking playing fast. I know it sounds like I am, but I, I want us all to kind of find that balance, okay, where you can pull off some fast guitar solos, uh, but you can also pull off some beautiful melodies. And with things like finger tapping, 
man, you can really get into some melodic patterns, start creating and writing some very melodic patterns and just some really cool patterns there. And the other cool thing about finger tapping is it, you know, it is a sought after technique and it does sound extremely cool even to people that don't play guitar. They see you doing that, they hear you doing that, and it's very impressive. But I just don't want you to get hung up on, well, I've gotta play this faster. I need to do it at 2038 whatever BP, <laughs> I'm just making stuff up at this point. But I think you guys get what I'm saying here. And I just wanna encourage you guys to, you know, continuously practice, be consistent, be patient, right? Allow yourself the time that it takes to grasp something. And the other thing I wanted to add to that is, and I said this before, is that guitar players, musicians, and it doesn't matter what you're doing, it could be weightlifting, right? It could be sports, whatever. You know, we all learn at different paces. Someone may catch on to something a lot faster than you. Don't let that discourage you guys. I'll just freely admit, I, I'm a slow learner on most things. I always have been. So, you know, I feel like, and maybe, maybe you're this way too, you just kind of feel like, man, I've got to work uh, just a little bit harder, it seems, than the average person to get it. Look, I've been there and I'm still there sometimes. Uh, but I just want to encourage you, don't let these things hold you back, okay? Keep pushing. Consistency and patience will always win the game, always hands down every time, okay? So give yourself that time, be consistent, be patient, you will get this, okay? So again, guys, I hope this finger tapping lesson for beginners, I truly hope that it helps you. Uh, leave me any comments or questions that you have. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. All of that stuff supports me, and hey, I, I truly appreciate it. I couldn't do this without your support, so thank you. Guys, you know what to do until the next video. As always, keep it metal.